welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video and thank you to those of you that have supported my channel by liking and subscribing your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I am unsponsored on this channel so thanks today is an extra fountain pen video as I don't usually post on Sundays but today is the follow-up to my Moonman M1000 review of yesterday my friend and YouTube colleague Alan Light of What I Ink and I had a Zoom conference where we discuss this Moonman fountain pen. We talk about the issue of the appropriation of Mont Blanc's design and about what we think might be Moonman's motivations to copy Mont Blanc, Leonardo, Stipula, Parker, and others. I hope you enjoy our discussion as much as we did, and please add to the discussion with your comments. So join us in solving the world's problems one fountain pen at a time right now. And here we are. Hey, Alan. Hey, Doug. How you doing? I'm doing very well. And uh, happy New Year to yeah, you happy and year. Happy New Year to everybody out there in pen world. Happy New Year to everybody. We're going to be talking about uh, Moonblanc today. This is the mm -hmm. name that I give. Yeah, I, I actually was one of my viewers that said that it's, it's a, a good name Moonblanc because a good Moon name. Man okay. loves to copy Mont Blanc recently. It was Leonardo and, and, they're, and they're not letting up and they're not and, letting up. They're yeah. not letting up. You just yeah. recently did a review of the P135 as I did. I did. I did. And yeah. I love that pen. It ended up being one nice of my pen. top 10 of, uh, of 2020. I was surprised. I don't I don't I don't blame you. It's a really attractive pen. Uh, it's it, the it mini food boxes aid. It's the night pen. It's the yeah. mini food aid nib that did it for me. I think. It writes well. It, it writes, writes well. well. It doesn't have the affliction that a lot of number six moon man nibs have had for me lately and only lately uh, where I've had to work on them a little bit uh, to get them uh, to work properly. I've Those, never, been never been thrilled with moon man nibs. In fact, yeah. all my best moon man pens I've replaced with pen BBS nibs. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't you blame go. you. I don't blame you. <laughs> but today we're going to talk about the moon man M1000. The M1000. I was going to call it uh, Le Brock. Yeah. But, uh, this yeah, your is... French, being that I'm sure you took French in school and I didn't, being from Canada, your French pronunciation is probably no, a, a lot my, better than mine. My French sucks. So uh, we're not well, even mine's not existent. Mine's non existent. So there you go. So uh, this uh, is uh, a copy of a, ver a relatively rare Moon, mm -hmm. moon Blanc. Moon Blanc. Now I'm saying it all the time. Yeah. Mon, Mon Blanc. Yeah. Um, Le Brock, and I can't pronounce the other word, but it's I the, think it's Legoul, Legoul, something like Legoul, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. are the, as you said in your review, are knife yeah. makers. And, right. uh, and yeah. the interesting thing about this pen uh, for me um, is that it's showing such high quality in terms of the wood is incredible. The fit and finish of Agreed. this pen is Agreed. amazing. And they've copied. Agreed. I don't have the I don't have the Mont Blanc, but from all the photos Not, I've I. seen, this it, pen yeah. is almost identical to the Mont Blanc. Yeah. And yeah. so, what surprised me is that the pen is so horrible in the hand. Mm -hmm. And so, both uh, it's a work of art. It is beautiful. It is beautifully right. made. Uh, the nib writes okay. It's a little bit fine yeah. for me, but. The fact that the balance of this pen and the metal section and everything, I can't write right. with this pen. It doesn't post. Right. I can't. Yeah. And so I'm, I keep asking the question, why does Moon Man keep making right. pens of such great quality? They are great copies. They copy them down to their faults. Yep. <laughs> right. I, yeah. I would bet if I had a Le Brock in my hand, I would hate it as much as I hate holding. Yeah. So, pen. so the one that I compared it to from a perspective was similar. Was if you think the Mont Blanc, uh, Mont Blanc Hitchcock, yeah, it's a bit heavier, but then again, it doesn't have. It's all metal. Doesn't have any uh, wood. Uh, uh, it's a roughly the same size, and, and it weighs silver, in. And it's all, it's all it's all silver. silver. Yeah, it's yeah, all so silver. It's it's silver with a little bit of enamel, but it's <laughs> almost all silver. It's 78 grams. And I think this was 60, what is this? 61, 61 versus 78. Yeah. So, so if you think about it, they're comp. I can't imagine the Mont Blanc genuine one of this weighs that, if it weighs more than 61, I can't weigh much more than, uh, much more than 61. So we're talking about probably, they probably, like you said, probably copied it down to the faults. Um, 
So a couple of theories uh, on why maybe they're being so faithful and not really trying to improve on it or even coming up with their own original designs, as mm-hmm. you were saying, well, if you could do this, you could certainly do an original design. Yeah. They're making for, uh, as we all know, their market is primarily a local Chinese market. They're not designing these pens to appeal to the global marketplace. I mean, we, obviously we get these pens. We have sometimes have to jump through a little bit of hoops to get them. They're all coming sent to us from China. Mm-hmm. They don't have a local dealer network right. or local distribution in the U.S. or Canada or anywhere for that matter that I'm aware of. Um, Goulet pens doesn't sell these. Anderson pens doesn't sell these. You know, you can't yeah. buy them on Amazon too easily. So uh, the point being is they're making them for a local Chinese market. Presumably, they know their business and know their local market, and presumably what the local market is wanting is pens that look like Mont Blanc pens. Mm, mm. Um, and otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it because we know they're capable of doing, uh, like you said, great engineering, great design, et cetera, uh, as opposed to an original design, why they came up with a, If they want to do a heavy metal and wood pen, why not do an original heavy metal and wood pen? That's yeah. maybe that's not what the market in China and wants. You know? And here is yeah. a Moon Man, Moon Man N800, yeah. which is right. a dead spit an image of a Leonardo. Um, right. Not it, again, it's labeled Moon Man and everything. So it's not a fake. Right. It's not a counterfeit. Right. But right. they have the ability to copy right. these things down to the nth degree. And right. then, they, then they copied this. You remember the M2. Right. Yeah. Right. And my, my thrill with this pen, even though I don't like it that much, is right. that they re-engineered the stipula right. to make it instead of a piston filler, they made it a spring filler. Yeah, which is and to me the, that's the really cool thing about that pen. I love that the, is the cool thing. Of, yeah. yeah, and uh, it became something innovative. They took the right. design, yeah, and changed it to the point where they made a different pen, which right. is, which is I guess why I don't understand why they don't take some of that initiative and make their own designs like Pen BBS does. But you're right. saying that uh, Pen BBS is like a small niche kind of thing. And Pen BBS is unique. If you think about the, the the Chinese manufacturers that we've been buying pens from, presumably there's probably another hundred makers in China that we yeah. don't even know about, but let's oh, yeah. Yeah. put that aside. For the ones that we know about, we recognize. you got Pen BBS, you got Wing Sun, you got Jin Hao, you got Moon Man, You've got now Hong Dian, which is Hong fairly Dian. recent. Yeah. Delight. Uh, yeah. You know, Delight. There's yeah. a co- you know, you talk about yeah. less than 10 manufacturers. The yes. only one who's really doing innovative things in terms of original design, original materials, and truly being innovative is Pen BBS. But they're really unique. They're the only ones in the world that are doing that. Forget about the only ones in China. Who else in the world? What, is there another pen manufacturer? And we've said this, I think you and I on other videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there any other pen manufacturer that you can go to right now and buy six or eight different filling mechanisms from? There yeah, isn't no. one. <laughs> no, no, no. There, you, can there, get there the, one. you can get some really excellent range of resins and things like that. Yeah. Leonardo. Leonardo did right. a great job of expanding. Right. That. But they have basically four or five different models and two right. filling systems. Yeah, right, right. So the, the pen BBS is really, really uh, unique globally yeah. uh, 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 in, uh, in terms of that. Look, yeah, unique materials, like for example, this pen here from Heinz Pen Company, which is a US pen manufacturer, yeah. they have a lot of cool resins. Mm-hmm. Maybe not quite as many as Pen BBS, but you know, there's a lot of cool resins that, that mm-hmm. I have. They're all cartridge converter pens, yeah. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, but, uh, but you know, a lot of really cool resins, does a really nice job, beautiful pens, but you know, they're all cartridge converter. Yeah. Nobody has the 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 uh, and and as we all know, not all of them work, right? So I mean, right? some some of them are hit or miss. Those filling systems from Pen BBS, yeah. some of them are yeah. clearly better than others. But you got to give them credit for trying. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and they're yeah. and they're pushing the envelope all the time with new designs. Right, right. right. And, um, but putting Pen BBS aside, the vast majority of the Chinese makers that we have, and Moomin really falls into the, the category of the vast majority of other ones. They're doing sort of tried and true, uh, uh, safe choices. Yeah. Uh, and maybe for the local Chinese market, like we said, copying this Mont Blanc pen is the safe choice because they, they're at the end of the day, they want to sell as many pens as they can. So, sure. uh, you know, that, that, that's probably what's going on here. Yeah. And uh, it, it sort of begs the question of when you get into this range here, right. you're, you're no longer... Um, just sort of nudging Mont Blanc. You're now you're getting into some of their rarefied 
pens. Yeah. So this right. pen was $65 US and the original right. limited edition is in the range of $2,500. You can get them for like 1500 1800 I think. Right. But, right. but we're talking about a huge range difference in, in right. pricing. Are they right. actually hurting Mont Blanc with this? No. No, because if if it's a limited edition run of Mont Blanc, Mont Blanc's already made. They don't make them. Sold, they made they made them. They sold them. Whatever money Mont Blanc was going to make on them, they've already cashed the check. But, right. So there isn't right. So the Mont Blanc's done. So then, that's then that's how they can. Then there's this pen, which yes. is the Jinhao One Five Nine, and right. that is a dead copy, other than the materials, of a of a Mont Blanc One Forty Nine. Right. Now this is all metal enamel right. over metal and right. they don't pretend to cut and it's nowhere near the quality uh, yep. of the of the mont blanc but this is a five dollar pen and right. the 149 is what a thousand uh, new new it's i think about a thousand you can get a really nice clean used one for those of you out there who are looking to buy a nice clean used one you shouldn't pay more than 450 would be the upper limit I want you to pay for a nice clean used one unless there's something special about it right you know let's, let's put it aside uh, a very big difference in uh, in price but this is Mont Blanc's money maker right <laughs> this That's is not a limited it. edition right so it does yeah uh, yeah uh, I think I put it away here it is yeah so why isn't Mont Blanc upset about the platinum president which is a 146 right so 146 right. and it's a resin it, pen yeah it's not a, it's, yeah. and it's a gold nib yep um yeah i so i have a couple of theories about this which we've discussed i think it's still a north of 100 nearly 200 hundred dollar pen right mm -hmm. it's not a cheap copy it's a it's a similar design pen that's expensive for platinum right it's for as platinum in terms of plans the pens that platinum makes it's up there um so I think from the marketplace perspective, that's viewed as sort of being okay because you're not selling a cheap copy. In other words, selling a pen that looks like a nut. If you take a $1,000 pen and make a $200 version of it, somehow that's viewed as not so bad. If you take a $1,000 pen and make a $20 version of it, that's where people start to have meltdowns over it. So I think that's, I think that's what we're dealing with. Here. That's certainly what David Parker was talking about in his video yeah. because he didn't have a problem with those right. uh, uh, Japanese copies, but he certainly had right. a problem with with this pen. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. So well, I think that's uh, what we're what we're. And again, that's still a gold nib and stuff like that. So I think part of the issue is you're not you're not cheapening it. The, if you think about it, the only difference between the Platinum President and the Mont Blanc pen is the physical size of the nib. Mm -hmm. Uh, now so my, it's like a number eight, isn't it? It's a number eight nib, yeah. and also mine's an, a vintage one. So mine mm -hmm. has a has a ebonite feed. They don't right. make them. You buy a new one, Mount Blanc. Yeah, you yeah, walk in Mount plastic. Blanc store, you get a plastic feed nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, so is is the is the fact that uh, the nib, the size of the nib and the filling mechanism, because the Mount Blanc pen is, is a, a pistol. pistol. Yeah. Now one could argue that that doesn't necessarily make it better. No. It typically makes it more expensive, but it makes it different uh, enough yeah. to avoid a lawsuit. It, right, which, right, which, but it's, which it, was my yeah, point yeah. with the Moon Man, yeah. because the Moon Man uh, T2 yeah. is right. a spring filler, not a piston filler, right. not like the right. stipula at all. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, tell me about your writing experience with this pen, not about the uh, quality yeah, yeah. of it or anything, so, but just right, the writing right. experience. Uh, okay, yeah. So I spent a day kind of using this for work so um i said typical taking some notes at meetings checking things off a to-do list kind of thing it wasn't like i'm a, not not like a university student who's taking pages and pages of notes i do have some days for work where i'm taking lots and lots of, it's a heavy writing day the day i used this was an average writing day it was fine it was fine would i want if i was a student who was writing several dozen pages of handwritten notes a day would i want to use this pen no but i would say that about three quarters of the pens I own, right? So, I wouldn't want to use, I wouldn't yeah, want to yeah, do that with yeah. the Mont Blanc Hitchcock either. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. so, so, so the answer to that is no, but you know, like I said, three quarters of the pens I own, I would say the same thing about. So, um, uh, I, but I would say that my experience was fine. Would I, as you well know, I'm a massive fan of posting. The fact that this pen didn't post, post yeah. problem for me. Um, less so now that I'm not 
walking around an office. My main rationale for not, I'm always afraid I'm going to lose the cap or set it down somewhere. Mm -hmm. If I'm given that I'm working from home uh, 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 now for reasons which I think uh, everyone understands, <laughs> um, uh, uh, that's less of an issue. Uh, I just I just like pens that post. Um, so uh, so my question yeah. to you is: Your channel is called What I Ink. Will this right. pen remain inked for you? Uh, this pen, I, well, I'm certainly not going to clean it out prematurely. <laughs> no, I mean, no. I will definitely. No, no, because there are a lot of pens that ink them up once yeah, and, use them and, and you, say, you know what, I'm probably not going to use them again, and I'll just clean it out. Yeah. I will not clean it out prematurely. It will it will get its full use until it runs out. Um, uh, will I? Question is, will it get re-inked and re stay in the rotation? Um, my rotation, my pens. I keep way too many pens inked. I probably keep forty to fifty pens inked at any one time, which is, I will tell all the folks out there, is too many. Do not many. emulate. Yeah, it's too many. Yeah. Don't emulate me. Um, that being said, it. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see when the time comes. I will let you know when this pen runs out, <laughs> which you know it'll probably be at this rate. Not for a while yeah um um uh, but uh well we, we shall uh we shall see it does do things that i like for example it doesn't really the the re, the retention mechanism if you will works yeah. well meaning it doesn't dry out i don't have to like reprime the feed maybe i have to shake it a little bit but you know after letting it sit for a couple of days so it it it, it it is fine. It also nice is going to be aware. Yeah, there's a good. Yeah, it has nice cap. It also might be a wear and tear issue. Wooden pens scare me a little bit. I have a fair number of Pilot wooden pens. I tend to keep all those in individual sleeves before I even put them in the pen case because I'm yeah. really uh, a little skittish about the wood. You can't pop. Like if a resin pen gets a scratch in it, I know buff how to buff up. that out. Yeah. Can't do that. I don't know. I can't do that. I can't do that with pens. So I, wooden pens scare me a little bit. But then again, as they age. They get a nice little characteristic to them uh, yeah. as well. I'm so already noticing that. Story. I'm already noticing I'm getting a patch now on this. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, uh, that's a really good question, whether it's going to remain inked. And the answer is, I don't know. There are, are Moonman pens in my rotation that I clearly like better and I think are more usable than this. Pen. Well, so for, they're more likely for me, to stay. Than, yeah. This pen, as soon as I'm finished, the review is going to get uninked and probably just right. remain in my stand. Uh, because right. I like looking at it and I'll use it for comparisons and things like that. Right. But right. Uh, as soon as I have well, it, it's in got a hand. smooth metal section. Once I saw that I had the smooth metal section, I knew you. This was not going to be a pen you're going to use on a regular. Well, I, I actually I don't know whether you saw it or not, but I found yeah. a way of uh, making a metal section. I did section, see that. I did uh, see that. Yeah. Frosty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By you spraying try it with some one? lacquer. No, I'm not going to try it on this one. This right, was right. this was 65 bucks US. I'm right, 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 right. But right. my experience with this pen, when I wrote with it for the first time, okay, it doesn't post, uh, right? But it wants to it wants to fall back all the time right. because that it's back weighted right. even when not posted. Yeah. So, so imagine you would want this to post even even if they could have made it postable. I don't know if you'd want to post it. it. No. It's just, yeah, because yeah. already with that bullet on the end, it's already back weighted. And so right. I'm trying to hold that pen down to the paper all the time. Right. And right. the fact that it gets a lot skinnier down here and tapers and it's slippery. Right. And and the, the coup de gras for me, to speak right. a little French, <laughs> more <laughs> French, um, yeah. is this Bach nib. Now, right. I have one other Bach that came right. in my Moonman M800. And right. it, this nib made the rounds. It went into about five different pens before I finally got it tweaked to the point where I like it. And I put it back in the M800. And it's actually right. a very nice pen. It's very wet and very nice. Right. This one, they're both the same. They're both fine. Uh, but this one is extremely fine. And this one is... Yeah, I got the impression that mine. You, uh, oh, by the way, uh, so Doug and I, in our individual reviews on this will be dropping. Uh, or, or we'll have dropped already by the time you guys see this video. So yes. make sure you check out both Doug and my reviews on this. I yeah, got the impression you're going, that you're going up on Friday, and I'm going. I'm going up Saturday. on Friday. Yeah, okay, and then Saturday. I think, I think we're this, looking to put this one out on Sunday. Yeah. yeah, this discussion will go up on Sunday. Yeah. Okay, so by the time this comes out, you should have both Doug and I's videos available. Yeah. All the links will be available in the yeah. respective uh, channel. So feel free to to check that out. Um, uh, I got the impression that your Bach nib was quite a bit finer than mine yes even though they're theoretically the same now and you didn't tweak yours no and no. yours came out 
about the way my M800 came out the first time right. I inked it. Yeah. And, now, back and, lips tend to run broad, which that's why that really surprised me on yours. And it like, surprised example, me too. And it's, it's have, not misaligned at all. Yeah, uh, no, it's just, so, I guess it's, you just, just, you know, look, it's a... It's I actually put it under my loop, both the nibs under my loop, right. and there's less tipping material on this than there was on right. the other Bach fine. And my, my friend and nibmeister, Jack uh, Hernandez, right. uh, I told him about the Bach discrepancy, and he said, well, there's Bach, and then there's Bach. Yeah. And, and that's what it is with Bach. It, that, it could be. I mean, my depends favorite on nib, where you're, what you're buying from them as a supplier, right? My favorite nib of all time of any of the hundreds of pens I own, and I think anyone who's viewed my channel more than a handful of times would probably know the answer to this, is my number eight Bach broad nib that's in my Ranga, Ranga. number five, which came from Germany to India yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 and that's my favorite nib on any pen at any price. Got, um, just to um, let you know, yeah. I've got a Ranga on the way. Oh, nice. Which one? Uh, 4C. Oh, I've got one of those. Those are nice. Yeah. Just, now, the 4C, incredible. I will tell you, is skinnier, <laughs> is a very good pen. I have that pen. I have a video on that pen if you want to uh, preview. Your Ranga is very big. That's what she said. <laughs> So anyway, no, so back to the Bach nibs, like yeah, I said, Bach. so my favorite nib of all time is Bach nib. Now, if you look, Bach nibs, to the point about your nib being very fine, yeah. Bach nibs tend to run very broad. If you watch the video of me writing with it, that's a broad. It writes like a stub. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it really writes like a stub. Um, my fine that I got on this pen is pretty close to most other places' mediums. Mm -hmm. um, um, so the German nibs in general, as we all know, tend to run a bit broader. Pelican being a fantastic, yeah. extreme example of that. Extreme, Pelicans yeah. are a size, if not sometimes two sizes Larger, uh, bigger yeah. than that yeah. Asian nib. Um, but Bach's not an exception. Bach tends to run just a tiny bit broader, uh, uh, than, than the typical run of the mill nib and certainly broader than a, an Asian nib in the same size. But I'm, I wonder whether it's Bach being just all over the map. And that's why so many people have problems with them. And so many people are switching over. And, you know, Leonardo has yeah. switched over to Yovo. Uh, Conklin right. has switched over to Yovo. Uh, is it inconsistency? I, I, yeah, except the, con, except the, con, the Yovo nibs that, con, if you don't mind me saying, the Yovo nibs that Conklin is getting have not been good. But I, mean, I they, haven't they, heard anything. You've got one? Uh, yeah, my Conklin Omniflex that I trashed yep. in my yeah, that, oh, yeah that, that, that was a Yovo, right? That's right. a Yovo made Conklin nib. It's I not trashed a, mine, I but it was a box. I took that yeah. nib out. Yeah. yeah, I took that nib out and replaced it and with a um, Anderson Pen stub nib, uh, and it's been fantastic. It'll that'll make an appearance in the my um, January monthly pens video briefly, just if you want to see what that looks like. Yeah. But um, yeah. But uh, that I only wrote with that once with the Omniflex nib, and that is just a bad nib. <laughs> I mean, you know, well, that is not a good nib. Yeah. I bought an Omniflex last year, and it made yeah. my worst pens of 2020. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because the Omniflex was terrible, and I bought two nibs with it, the Omni and uh, yeah. a Medium, and the Medium wouldn't write either. So I pulled that nib and put yeah. a uh, Here's the a thing. Here's the... In it. Yeah. But if you really want a Flex nib experience, you can't you you got to just go get a vintage pen and you don't have to spend a lot of money on them because you can get one that's maybe not in the best condition that still has a decent nib in it yeah and if you're willing to do maybe a little bit of work and what have you we're not talking a major investment here we're talking something comparable to what say you pay for a conklin steel omniflex that doesn't work yeah, yeah doesn't in this work. case you're going to get you're going to get a hundred year old nib <laughs> that's going to really work phenomenally so yeah. for folks out there that really want that flex experience you got to get a vintage 14 karat nib. I, I, I'm sorry to say, it's just, it's just someday I, somebody will crack the secret sauce on that, but they ha it hasn't been done yet. It isn't, yeah. it isn't certainly what's the something I'm looking for because I'm not a Spencerian by any stretch. So no way. Oh, I'm clearly <laughs> not either. I'm clear. I'm clearly not either as I have the worst <laughs> handwriting of anybody reviewing pens online, but, uh, <laughs> but I just like, I just like the, uh, I just like the experience. You know, I just, I just, I just, I just let, this is what I do like is the fact that and I, there's a video I did a long time ago where I highlighted this fact on a vintage flex nib. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to try have just to the try. normal motion yes. of your hand without doing any flexing. You get the variation, That's even the on a modern flex nib, you still have to actually of consciously course. try to get the flex. That's a, yeah. that makes all the difference in the world. That, and that, even if that, it's just a certain amount of bounce, 
I my yeah. op, my Opus eighty eight Bella has a right. uh, Yovo uh, steel uh, right. broad broad nib, and right. I was surprised at how much bounce there was. In oh yeah, every once in a while you very, get very kind of nice. lucky almost, and yeah. you just get a bouncy nib. But that's yeah. almost by accident, not by yeah, sometimes yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've had that happen where I'm like, you know, you get like a new nib and you're like, wow, this has got a little bit of bounce to it. I don't think they were, I, I have a strange feeling that when that happens, it's just serendipity and not necessarily design. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was uh, terrific, Alan. I really appreciate doing another co-pro with you. And uh, maybe we'll find another Likewise. pen together that we'll do again. Uh, this was certainly a worthy Yeah, this is our first because... non-pen non BBS one. All the other ones yeah. we've done have been pen BBS, yeah. yeah. And something with a little bit of controversy to it always uh, adds some yeah. spice to the conversation. Yeah, <laughs> e e e uh, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, um, I, again, just make sure everybody watching, check out Doug's uh, review, check out my review, and... and um, uh, check out our whole channels, by the way, while you're at it. <laughs> and, and don't uh, forget to like uh, and subscribe and comment. And Exactly. Uh, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. I made this.